Hi, friends. Today we're diving back into Pat McGrath's oh, Mothership 2 Sublime. I already have a tutorial on my channel, but wanted to film a revamped one. I think we'll do maybe six looks. Yeah, I think six looks. And if it's your first time here, hi, I'm Alicia, and I love to do eyeshadow tutorials, as well as to encourage you to use the makeup you already have, especially if it's a palette that costs you $125, and you haven't been using it, you feel intimidated, and you're like, I don't know what to do. It's a lot going on in this palette. Well, hopefully this video will inspire you to use Pat McGrath's Sublime, or maybe you have similar shades, can create your own Sublime palette and still join in on the fun. Today we have Gojo on. Look at him. Displaying some reverse curse technique. I love Jujutsu Kaisen, but it is so complex and I'm just so dumb. I have to watch the anime more than once, read the manga more than once, and watch analysis videos to fully understand curse technique. The difference between that, curse spirits, curse energy users, curse technique manipulation, black flash, I don't know. All my complexion and cheek products will be listed down below if you want to find out what I'm wearing. And with all the intro stuff out the way, why don't you come in a little closer? <laughs> That's enough. To briefly go over the layout of a Mothership palette, you have 10 shadows in all. The six here are your everyday go-to shades, which consists of a matte formula. Well, in this case, two matte formulas, a shimmer, some metallics going on in here, and it's fairly neutral. Yeah, you got your rose tone, copper tone, more of like a bronze taupe, black and brown plum leaning matte with the nudish, well, in this case, pinky type of champagne shade going on. And here you got your jewel box specialty shades, which houses the triple number shade, the VR shade, astral shade, and the blitz shade. In this case, we have the bronze 005, Blitz Emerald, VR Nectar, and Astral Ghost Orchid. The role these shades play is to provide some glitz, a little more shine. You see Blitz Emerald is the most, in terms of color rich shade here, if you apply that on its own, it's gonna be a va va voom eye. Bronze 005 is a very yellow gold leaning bronze, shiny as well. And the VR Astral shades I like to use as toppers, where if you layer it over, let's say, rose dusk it'll be a little more pink flip there but you'll see those shades and actions when we get to it eyelids are prepped and i wanted to begin with the easiest approach here you have sublime and you're like i just want to do one shade today skin show nude glow is just your champagne shade that you can place here on the inner corner right it will be just a little bit of hint a hint of highlight not too much i've had this palette for quite some time so i'm not sure if the shine will be a little dull however you see a little bit of light there on the inner corner and the brow bone so that's the simplest approach you can also just place this color on the lid and skin show glow from sublime has a little bit of a pink shift i know it's hard to detect on camera but if you wanted the simplest route possible, you could go in with Skin Show Nude Glow and then maybe go in with Dark. Pick that up with a small flat shader brush and gently toss that on your lash line. Whether you want to go with the shadow or maybe you'll use Pat's Permagel Liner in Black Coffee, which my go-to fave liner right now. I'm not pulling it out too far, so you got a little definition there. Throw on some mascara and you're done. I think that might be the easiest approach to take if you just wanted to use two shades. Instead of using the dark matte, you can use the black matte in the same manner. Perhaps you wanted a little bit more. You're like, that's cool, Alicia, but what if I wanted to use Rose Dusk? Rose Dusk has a lovely texture where I would consider this to be like a shimmer satin. You see how soft it is and how easy it is to blend, where the edges blur nicely. You don't need to accompany this with the matte per se. So I'm taking that color with my Chikohoro Kazan 06, 
a very fluffy eyeshadow brush that's flat on both sides and I use that side to pick up the shadow and you see very fluffy here on the edges which I think important to then use as a blender. I turn the brush on its side to toss that color through the crease. No, you don't have to bring it up as high as I just did. You can keep it lower. Instead, however, you can wipe the brush and use it clean to blend the shadow through the crease if you don't want so much color here. Taking a smaller brush, this is my Chikohoro Takumi T7, and now applying Rose Dusk on the lower lash line. I think Rose Dusk is one of those just easy colors that that yes is rose, but it also is mauve leaning, I feel. And I think beautiful to wear solo. I would tread carefully if you wanted to apply rose dusk with dark, you will get a very smoky eye. But that's the beauty of it. You can dial the intensity of your eye look depending on how you combine these shadows. But I wanted to show you how many of these shadows perform solo, where in this case, as you see, just applying rose dusk again by itself looks beautifully smooth on the skin it's not super metallic but it's not flat either you see there's a sheen coming from my lid so that little bit of shimmer satin finish i think elevates the eye look a touch bit more instead of it just being a matte shadow and we can hop back into skin show glow and place that shadow now on this inner corner, yeah? And I think when paired with Rose Dusk, provides a lovely gradient considering that there is that very light pink flip that exists in the shade. Lashes, liner, however you wanna do it, but now returning to the first eye because I wanted to show you the most basic approach you can use when diving into Sublime. Why don't we go in with Iconic? Iconic is a beautiful shade and I'm taking the same Kazan squirrel brush, placing that on my lid. Now I know I'm layering this over skin show glow, but in a, a realistic scenario, maybe you don't have time to take off what you already had on the eye and you just have time to continue from there, right? So worst comes to worst, you just apply this shade over the skin show one and it's not a disaster. You actually see a little bit of that pink come from underneath and i think that a nice layering effect don't you think if you want it a little bit more then maybe take some dark and with a slightly bigger brush than the one i used before to create this wing liner i'm tapping a little bit of this matte on the outer part of my lid and because we already went in with Iconic, you will get a mix of textures here, right? So if you were to go in with Dark first, it will show primarily matte on the outer part of the eye, but because we did layer over Iconic, this does look a little shimmery on the outside here. However, I don't mind it, especially if you're light-handed with this application just to be consistent here i am pulling the dark mat onto the outer i'm gonna keep it outer corner quarter you could have a clean blender on standby to refine the edges of that application not to necessarily add more color just more to smooth out those edges why not we can use copper toned here on the inner part of the eye i know might not be doable if you are lighter than me but certainly if you're my complexion or deeper i think copper tone will be a lovely highlight just a nice gradient to have in place of skin show glow However, you can still go in with Skin Show Glow, but on the very inner part. In fact, when layered over Copper Tone, it lightens it a bit and produces another shade altogether, like it's like a pink crimson shade. Now before, when describing the role of the astral shades here, just wanna give you another peek of how everything looks by itself without any jewel shades on top. If we wanted to, however, we can go in with VR Nectar. I'm just tapping here, placing that over Rose Dusk down the center of my lid, 
maybe bringing it up a touch beyond the crease and that brightens the eye to where it's not overwhelmingly glitzy shiny it's enough shine that it adds dimension to rose dusk and i know someone had suggested that i do this because when you flash a light on the shade it just has such beautiful shine especially when it settles and you give it time to just kind of sink into your natural lid oils and the shadow my goodness just the twinkle effect is outrageously beautiful sorry i hit my my mic base and i didn't pick up a lot you don't need a lot of the shade a finger tap and slap is all that is required. For this side, we could keep it as is. I just love the gradation from iconic into dark. I think very daily friendly if you just wanted to omit the dark in terms of how we fluffed it out outer lid you could have just kept it on the lash line because i understand this could be very smoky for the day but the taupe cooled nature of iconic i think makes it beautifully smoky for for daily wear as well just to have a little bit of fun however i wanted to take astral ghost orchid right onto the inner corner and this will definitely bring more of that pink hue forward from Skin Show Glow. Also, a great opportunity to introduce the shade in a more subdued fashion, right? If you don't want this on your lid, you can maybe tap it on the inner part of your lower lash line, fluff it in and higher towards the higher part of the inner corner. So there's a lot of things you can do. But yeah, this is round number one. How do you like it? Let me slap on some lashes and I'll be right back. Here is a wide shot of the final looks on the lashes. I have chandelier style aerial. And on the lip, I popped on some Natasha Denona. I need a nude in Amorosa and the liner in Naya. I loved how this turned out. I thought these were fairly simple looks to achieve and we built them up. So we kind of had like two... Two, three and three in one round now that we covered a few of the matte and shimmer satin shades as i like to call them why don't we go into the glitzy glitz specifically layering blitz emerald over the dark matte as we did in bronze seduction when we layered blitz fire blitz flyer for the blitz f or flame I forgot. Over Disobedient or Entrapment, one of those. I would love to see how Blitz Emerald looks on top of that brown matte. So why don't I take this off and meet you back here in a minute. We begin by applying dark right, just right on top of this lid. And I am very interested to discover how it will change the look of Blitz Emerald could only imagine it will dial it down a touch and I like to present this method because if you want to wear Blitz Emerald on the lid but I understand it's a vibrant color to commit to unless you deliberately want your lid to look green right that's uh, another situation entirely but if you want to take advantage of Blitz Emerald more often well, instead of applying Blitz Emerald with my finger, I'm taking a brush to lightly flick that color on top of the dark matte. And what this will do is not apply as much, but you also have that dark matte underneath just to help diffuse that application. Now, while I understand this still looks very green, I get it. I do think applying a little bit, maybe less than what I just did over the mat, just washes it out a touch bit more where you can maybe feel more confident in wearing this solo. Especially if you keep blending, that shininess is going to die down a little bit. And what you have left behind is just the green shade versus the twinkle as well. There you go, it started off very shiny green, but with the blending and just the refining, you dial down the color as well as the twinkle effect. Beware though, this shade does have fallout. So to avoid that, just do your eyes first. Taking the dark matte here 
on my lower lash line. What we can do on the inner part, however, is slap on a little bit of intensifies. You don't necessarily have to use this wand. You can use a regular primer, glitter glue, to bring out bronze 005. It will make this shade stick a lot better. And I think nice to place here on the inner part of your lower lash line if you wanna go that route. Otherwise, you can use something lighter, like copper tone or rose dust that's not as like pow wow, but I think really beautiful to use. Why not? Let's go in with VR Nectar and use that as our inner corner highlight of choice. It doesn't have a very strong base, so if you wanted to, you can go in with Skin Show Glow first and then top it off with VR Nectar. Or you could apply VR Nectar on top of this, but I know this is supposed to be the low key eye. So going in with the intensifies all over. And now with the finger, cause this, Okay, if the day has arrived where you are fully committing to Blitz Emerald and what it has to offer, definitely go in with your primer, special shade, enhancer of choice. And I'm being very careful in tapping in and around. Now, I do feel you can get away with blending out the edges of Blitz Emerald because it has a purple base to it. So it's not gonna have a, a neutral look. If you wanted to, you very much could use dark to blend out the edges. But if you wanted to keep this very minimalist, then continue blending out Blitz Emerald like you would with the other shades in here. This got a little messy because I think it just got stuck to my, what I, well, I didn't put the primer there, but this is just how it goes sometimes. That's why it's important to have your eraser, get your eraser on standby and blend up in a way that's gonna clean up the edges and then come back in for some refinement. So that is how it looks with Blitz Solo. That's how it looks with Blitz Emerald on top of the dark matte. Taking Blitz Emerald also on the entirety, well, maybe three quarters, and we can place something else on the inner part of our eyes. What I wanted to do, however, is show you how beautiful VR Nectar looks on top of Blitz Emerald. It's like your watermelon eye. We got the green on the outside and the pink on the inside. Now I know this might not be everyone's favorite combination, but it's so pretty. It's almost like you applied a separate lid color but layering VR Nectar on top just brings it to another place. I'm actually tapping some VR Nectar right at the center of my lower lash line to coincide with what's happening on the lid. And Rose Dusk, why not? On the lower inner part of the eye, I think that's very pretty. And whisking some, not necessarily on the inner corner, just more on the inner part of the inner. <laughs> I will use Skin Show Glow as the prominent highlight shade, overlapping Rose Dusk, so it appears as a lovely gradient from that opalescent pink flip to the rosier pink. All right, let's apply some lashes and I'll be right back. Here is round two, primarily using Blitz Emerald in two ways, more subdued, layered over the dark matte, and more wham bam in your face, being the primary lid show-stopping shade. However, adding VR Nectar, I think, enlightens it a little bit. You could just keep it all green for sure, but because we have the VR shades at our disposal, why don't just use as many as possible? And as I had mentioned in our first demo, you don't need a ton of the VR Nectar shade. Tap and slap, that's all you gotta do. Again, the green by itself is lovely, but to have like this pink shiny twinkle flip on the center, beautiful. And if you want a little bit of green, but not this, then layering over the dark brown matte, I think is a great way to go. Now I know I have not used the black matte yet. I think we can all agree if you want it 
all these from from where we started to now if you wanted to dial up the intensity then you use the black mat on the outer corner of the lid maybe for this side instead of going all over with blitz emerald you maybe go in with the black furs and then tap blitz emerald on the majority of the lid to make it more smoky instead of exclusively all blitz emerald but i think because of blitz emerald's purple base it's smoky already however i understand if you wanted to make it deeper in that respect yes add in the black mat and i can quickly show you i know i'm not up close but i will take a smaller brush and just tap the black mat at the end of the lid and because we already have the brown fluffed through the crease you don't need to bring the black mat up too high if you just tap it on then the brown mat catches the black and it diffuses automatically so that's good to know if you change your mind i think it's nice to start with the brown the i i would consider this more like a plummy bark brown you start with that first then the black mat is very easy to introduce i just tapped it on the outer corner and look how that changed it completely it really deepened the look and i think the easiest way to go instead of applying this first then whisk on blitz emerald blur it out to however wash of color you wish to achieve tap in the black and you're done we got one more round to go maybe we'll take the opportunity to use bronze 005 all over the lid with some intensifies well let's take off these lashes and i'll see you back here in a bit also wanted to briefly mention you could apply copper tone and rose dusk on your cheeks as blush i think they slide beautifully across the skin maybe apply it a little higher so you have somewhere to go on the blend but all in all remember these are artistry palettes where you can't use the colors on other parts of your face besides just the eyes. I'm gonna go classic here. So let's pick up that Takumi brush, ready to go. Dabbing on dark on the inner and outer brackets of my lid. I'm being very careless about this application as I want Bronze 005 to be the show-stopping moment here. However, I do wanna use a little bit of copper tone as my crease shade of choice combining the dark so maybe let's see here i'll pick up dark again with that same takumi and pull it across the lid so it can mix with copper tone and therefore create a really nice gradient here so you see you got copper tone through the crease pulled in a little more of the dark matte. I think they play nicely together. I'm turning the brush on its side just so I can get a a tighter blend there. Slapping on that intensified right down the middle. Taking bronze 005 with my finger. Oh boy. Tapping that right where I placed the intensifies and then using a clean finger to tap the edges of that application. Now, if it looks like it's sitting on top, this is where we return to the first brush we used, tap on some dark on the edges of Bronze 005. This is how you'll create a smoother transition so it doesn't look so like out of place, right? You could also fluff on a little bit of copper tone and use the edge of the brush again to refine the edges a little bit maybe spread them out as well so it can have a, a cleaner scatter effect because remember the intensifies will hold on to the majority of the color so don't fear that you'll blend away bronze 005 although i i could assume that you probably will if you placed it right on the mat as it will prove to be too dry. So again, it doesn't have to be intensifies, but if you want that to stick, and I'm placing more with my finger to make it even brighter, that's pretty. On the lower lash line, hmm. Well, we could do Blitz Emerald if you just wanted to crank it up and get crazy. Although I think it'll be rather nice to do Copper Tone on the lower lash line. And then, 
bring in some dark here on top. Why not? I'll pull it in from the inner half of the lower lash line. Ooh, that's pretty. I'm just doing a little bit of refining here. What should we do on the inner corner? I'm gonna slap on some intensifies. Esum S31 with Astral Ghost Orchid and then tapping that right on intensifies and that's going to bring the pink flip more forward. It won't look as dull and I think a really nice addition and for it to serve as our inner corner highlight for this eye look. Let's take Iconic now to set up our last look here. I think Iconic is great to place through the crease here. This could be as we had went over during our first round, a one and done shade. Take a little bit of Rose Dusk and place that on the rest of the lid. Now I would like to layer Blitz Emerald on top as a liner, but I'm taking Pat's Black Coffee and pulling that across the lid first. So it will serve as our sticky pad, if you will, for Blitz Emerald. Now that we have the foundation on, let's get in on Blitz Emerald and then tap that on top of Black Coffee. If you like, you could also wet the shade or use a mixing medium to create a little more slide. But I think tapping on the outline is also a great way to go. The shape is already there, right? So you don't have to use Blitz Emerald to create the wing. You already have the base set up and all that is required is for you to go over what you already drew with black coffee. And I think that's great to have the green on top of Rose Dusk is a nice way, again, to introduce this shade. We covered, again, applying this over the dark mat, applying it solo all over the lid. One method I did not cover was applying this on the inner part of the eye, just to show you I could then go in with Blitz Emerald. I know I have a lot of a lot going on on this eye already, but you can pull in a little bit of your Blitz Emerald shade here and have that as like your pop of color, especially if you layer it with Astral Ghost Orchid. I think that's very pretty. And to have the green show in this way, I think vitally important that you first set up your wing. I use black coffee, but you can use black, which will be great because that's going to really amplify the Blitz Emerald shade. For lower lash line, I'll just use Iconic to pull everything together. Cause again, what's going on the main stage moment is what's going on on the lid for that wing. A little bit of skin show. All right, let's apply some lashes and I'll be right back. And here is our final round using Pat McGrath's Mothership 2 Sublime. I am very happy with how the last eye turned out just to show how you can incorporate Blitz Emerald in a very subtle way, but still it be impactful, right? I think you can still detect that green hue when layered on top of black coffee in this case that I use that shade. You could use whatever liner that you have in your collection. However, I do feel that's an easier approach to sketch out the wing liner shape with your pencil first and simply just tap on the color after because the shape is already there. And I like what we did here. Bronze 005 on the dark brown matte is lovely. That rich yellow bronze hue, I guess I would categorize it as like a yellow copper. It's like a very warm gold. With the intensifier, it really brings out that shine. If you had wanted, you could layer over this shade, VR Nectar or Astral Ghost Orchid, if you wanted it to have like a pink flip. And back to when I had said this is an artistry palette, I applied Skin Show Glow as a highlight. Although I have the rose ink on, which is so funny because there, I guess there's a dispute going on since this is called like uh, divine Dewey something, and I'm using it in, in a Pat McGrath video. I'm sorry. <laughs> All that to say, like I mentioned before, you want to go in with Copper Tone. I think really nice to place on the cheeks because since it does have that shimmer, it leaves behind a beautiful sheen 
on the tops of your cheeks and again when combined with skin show glow a really nice way to go i think that's why sublime ranks very high for me out of all the pat mcgrath palettes that i have in my collection because of its versatility even though with the inclusion of blitz emerald i think overall the palette is neutral in that again you have this foundation brown that you can use with any of the shades in here to adjust the intensity how it looks on the lid and then you have the black matte which as you saw in the second demo tapping a little bit of that black matte on the outer corner really smokes it out and just have it appear beautifully deep and rich but then you have the fun topper shades again when applied lightly can have such beautiful impact I think it's such an easy approach and when you learn how to use those shades properly for your eye shape for your lid type you can have beautiful looks using any mothership palette so hopefully this video helped let me know if you've been using any of your mothership palettes if sublime is your favorite where it sits on you for your own pat mcgrath mothership ranking i'll see you down in the comments fam and until then that is a wrap thank you all so much for watching I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial. Mothership Extravaganza. Or anime, get ready with me. Take care, and I will see you again soon.